If you've been around for a few years, you may have seen me on TV, but today I'd like to get into your TV. I've reviewed TCL phones with gorgeous displays at great prices, but this time I'm going back to where it all began and giving you a mega review of TCL's 5 Series 55 inch its Google TV operating system, and an explainer and exploration of QLED technology. There will be chapter markers below so that you can move through the hardware review, the Google TV review, and the QLED nerdery. Let's go! So, let's begin with the first thing you notice out of the box, the hardware. This is the 5 Series 55 inch model number 55S546 or S546 is the, the short model number you'll find online. And though I'm reviewing the 55 inch, 5 series is also available in 50, 65 and 75 inch versions with the main difference between them being the amount of local dimming zones. We'll get into that in a bit. So this TV is really thin with almost no bezel. All the brains are kept toward the bottom half on the rear of the display where you'll find your power port on one side, then all of your other ports on the other side. You get a physical privacy switch to enable or disable the TV's integrated far field microphone built into this module just below the bottom bezel of the unit. It has an LED which lights up when active. You also get a USB port, Ethernet, three HDMI 2.0 ports, one with eARC, your antenna slash coax cable in, and an analog AV input, headphone out, and optical audio out. You also get two 8 watt speakers on the rear of the TV and their volume is impressive, even providing a bit, a small bit of bass feedback without having a subwoofer. I'll get into that in more detail in a bit. The included remote control has a great deal of functionality. You get a button which adds content to your watch list, a TV setting button, a hard button for Google Assistant, as well as your standard volume and some dedicated service buttons for quick launching certain streaming apps. But this is a Google TV, so there is added remote functionality when you consider your Android and iOS smartphones and the Google TV apps connectivity, as well as gaming remotes to access Stadia. More on that in a bit as well. Using Google Assistant via the remote and the optional microphone built into the TV works like a charm and is responsive. Hey Google, open Stadia. And you know what? You can't talk QLED TV hardware without talking about QLED technology. So let's get into that and talk about the experience of using the TV itself. Then we'll get to using that Google TV interface and how that's changed from the previous Android TV iteration. So the Q is for quantum dots. Briefly, the quantum dot technology is an attempt to bring LED LCD panels closer in black and color quality to OLED technology, which is known for its deep blacks and beautiful images. Quantum dots, in the most simple terms, place a layer of backlighting, a quantum dot filter, directly between the LED backlight and the LCD screen. The second layer, this second layer, it purifies the color of light coming from the LEDs, which is supposed to give you more vivid saturated color. And in the case of this model with full array local dimming, you're getting the best combination of LED TV tech, which uses grids of LEDs with the ability to light up each individual LED rather than lighting up the screen around the edges as is the case in edge lit displays or in grids or clusters of grids of lights directly behind the pixel layer as in direct lit and locally dimmed backlighting. TCL's QLED with full array local dimming is the best 
backlighting tech available on an LED LCD, though implementation can have a big effect on how good a full array local dim panel looks. All right, so how does all that work out in practice? Off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that this panel is absolutely gorgeous. The first day I turned it on, my wife and I watched The Book of Boba Fett, the second episode with The Mandalorian making an appearance. The cockpit scene with his gleaming armor set against the backdrop of the blackness of space was impressive. My son walked by as we were watching and it stopped him dead in his tracks and he commented on how striking the image was. That's the good news. And while there is no bad news per se, you will want to play with the settings a bit to get the best picture possible for the content you're watching. For example, when I first powered up, the motion smoothing was turned on and everything looked artificial to me. That's a very preferential thing as some folks don't mind it. Personally, I opted for the nature cinema mode, which makes 24 frame per second content look like filmed 24 frame content instead of high frame rate content. The other issue I encountered is one of the downsides to quantum dot LEDs, which is a transmissive light technology as opposed to OLED, which is an emissive light technology, which doesn't require an active backlight. As a result, that downside is blooming. When you have scenes which switch from dark to very bright, you'll see that parts of the image have a blown out haze to them. Things like star fields in space or, or that an entire image is blown out a bit until the QLED readjusts. I noticed this to the extent that it was annoying, but after a couple adjustments, that was greatly minimized to the point that it was no longer noticeable. What changes did I make? What's my setup? I went into the brightness settings and turned the black level down, set the local contrast to low. As I said earlier, I also turned on nature cinema and turned off motion clarity. For Dolby Vision content, I keep the setting to Dolby Vision Bright, and for non-Dolby Vision content, say HD or HDR, I kept the display in movie mode. Why not Smart HDR? I found that it actually does some interesting things to skin tones. In some shows, people's flesh tones look way too yellow and harsh. The image just looks to me as if it just has a lot of compression. Coming from having experienced TCL TVs running the Roku interface and some competitors like Sharp running the same thing, I have to say that this Google TV interface navigation is quite fast. Moving through the different menus, opening apps, it was a joy most of the time. And of course, launching apps via voice was equally as fast and a solid experience. Hey Google, launch YouTube. Opening YouTube. My only issue here is that there were times when behavior was a bit glitchy or laggy. Backing out of an app or launching a live TV sling program directly from the live tab or guide got weird where I had to do it a couple times to get it to take. It kind of had trouble loading sling, it, it, it feels like sometimes. With that said, all of my picture tuning held pretty consistently across apps and programs unless it was sports. I watched the Super Bowl and of course, I turned on all the motion enhancements and set the picture mode to sports and it looked beautiful. I also watched some Olympic skiing this way and it was a delight as well. My only complaint here will be that in Book of Boba Fett, there were some very dark scenes and even with my settings configured to my liking, there were jumps in brightness and some banding. Most folk may not notice, however, but this is in part what I've been doing for a living for a long time, so staring at monitors and noticing any issues is kind of my thing. You know what else was my thing? The speakers on this TV. Let's face it, TVs are rail thin and so there's often little space for any decent speakers and while you aren't going to be DJing a house party with the ones in the back of this TV, they are among the loudest I've heard in some time, depending on which app you're using. In the Disney Plus app, I had to set the volume to around only 25% and that was plenty loud. In the HBO Max app, on the other hand, I had to set it all the way to 100%. Live TV, the Super Bowl, back down to around 40 to 50%. I have no complaints here. I'd still made it to a sound bar for maximum enjoyment, 
But if funds were low and all you can afford at first is this TV purchase, you'll do fine with just the built-in speakers. Not something I'd say for very many TVs. The solid speaker quality also helped with gaming. I played through some Google Play games content and Stadia with solid results. Visually though, in some games, banding was definitely noticeable. The more gradient the backgrounds were, as you can see here in the Falconeer, the more susceptible they were to banding. But Unkilled and Badland both look great on the TV and thanks to variable refresh rates, the games played plenty smooth. I'm more of a casual gamer, so if you're hardcore here, your mileage may vary. And speaking of your mileage varying, I hooked up my Xbox One, or my son's Xbox One, to the TV. It played just fine, visuals were solid, but if you're serious, if you're hardcore, there are TVs which support higher refresh rates and will be more friendly to your gaming. Just know that should you get into some gaming through the TV itself and not a console, Google TV is not a one-trick pony when it comes to connectivity. Here's an Xbox Elite controller connected to the TCL 5 series. That's how I played the Stadia game I showed you earlier and the games via Google Game Center. There are different controllers you can connect, including PS5 and Stadia branded controllers. You can use the included remote, but obviously a gamepad is going to get you better mileage. So, Android fans, let's talk Google TV. If you're confused by the concurrent existence of this and Android TV, I'll make it simple. Think of Google TV not as a replacement, but rebranding of the Android TV of yesterday where television, specifically live broadcasts, are front and center. Under the hood, much of what you loved on your pre-Google TV Chromecasts is still there, but with some fancy new features and window dressing. The home screen now focuses on content over apps, beginning with the For You tab. You're going to get recommendations based on your viewing habits across services, and if you engage with the content by giving it that thumbs up or thumbs down, what is For You will grow smarter over time. I think one of the main differences would be that your content is surfaced here across apps instead of having to go app to app to see what each has to offer. It's just more efficient. One note for the privacy conscious, Google is first an ads and data company, so know that you will get some viewing ads, some TV show, movie ads here. The live TV tab is another big change from Android TV. This tab pulls in live content from various sources. In this case, I subscribe to Sling TV, so I get these boxes up chop showing what's on now, as well as this guide below, let's get into that, showing me what's on as well. Reminiscent of cable guides that many of you may already be familiar with. One of the features I really love is the ambient mode, which allows me to use my TV as a picture frame so that I can have beautiful images streaming when I don't wanna watch TV, but I'm sitting in the room writing reviews like this one. Pro tip on these TVs. If you leave it on with ambient mode set, you get those images. But if you really wanna turn the TV off via the remote, you get two options. Just hit the power button and the TV turns off in standby mode, but press and hold and you'll get a dialogue box which allows you to fully power down. I really feel like these Google TVs are fully powered up because you can use the Google TV app on your Android phones, laptops, tablets, and smart speakers to do more than just control the TV, making it much easier much of the time to enter passwords when linking some subscriptions to the TV, but also to connect with your content away from the TV, then come back to the TV to enjoy it. Here's what I'm talking about. You remember there's a movie you want to watch, but you're not at home. Look it up on your phone, then click watch list. Then when you get back to your TV, it's waiting there for you. You can do that from your other Google connected devices as well. I'm really all about well-connected seamless ecosystem experiences. And with this, the only thing Google is missing is that smartwatch for now. My only gripe is that keyboard entry when linking some services doesn't activate on the app. Like when I was trying to sign into my Hulu account, 
It worked for signing into Google accounts and Netflix, but not Hulu. Here are some other areas which aren't quite seamless, not just yet. Google said that support for multiple profiles whose recommendations will show up when you are switching between those profiles was coming, and it isn't quite there yet. I can have my profile, and I can even add, let's say, my wife's Google profile, but if hers is secondary, it won't show her recommendations. It will only show up in Google apps like YouTube. Yet, you can set the TV up so that there is a child's profile so that you can set content and spending limits. And this being a Google product, it would be nice to use Google Duo for calls, wouldn't it? Well, TCL sells an $80 webcam complete with a privacy cover and some decent specs. Nice. And if you feel like Google doesn't play nice when it comes to your privacy, the TV also has a built-in basic TV mode. This will allow you to use hardware like an over-the-air HD antenna to pull in broadcast television content without being connected to the internet. They truly thought of everything. Wrapping up here, the three components, the TV itself, easy to recommend for its bright display with solid color rendering after you dial it into your liking and loudspeakers for a flat panel with a surprising bass response. Again, for a flat panel. QLED, if you want a high quality image and OLED is outside your budget, QLED is a vibrant option which will give you a beautiful picture without blowing up your bank account. It isn't perfect, but you get a lot for your money, especially with the inclusion on this model of Dolby Vision HDR Plus, which is one of the few TVs to support both and full array local dimming. Then Google TV. The interface is intuitive. I set the TV up and my wife, without hitting any manuals one night, downloaded and installed one of her favorite apps to watch content on and she's a pretty smart cookie but usually I handle that kind of thing and she just kind of dove right in and knocked it out so kudos to Google for uh, making it easy for those who don't feel like uh, like me sitting around and playing with tech for hours overall this is a well-rounded experience and TCL makes a great value proposition adding Google TV to its lineup as a regular Roku user, I have to say that I'd actually prefer Google TV over Roku for my next interface, having reviewed this particular unit. Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Android Central. I don't take it lightly that you spent your time here watching with us today. If you have any questions about this TCL TV, this five series, any questions about Google TV, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. I'll get to them. Don't take it lightly that you spent your time watching here with us today. If this has helped you, please go ahead and click that thumbs up, subscribe, like, all the little buttons down there so you'll be notified when we upload the latest content, when we drop new reviews. Thank you for watching.